I felt it in my body, right? Everything contracted. It was a feeling. Your feelings tell you so much. So I've learned over the years to trust, to under, to calibrate what those feelings mean. Hello, hello, and welcome to this special episode of The Unstoppable Woman. We have decided to do a feature called Unpacking the Episode, and so we are going to dive deeper into what I shared and taught in episodes, and I have with me today Sarah Hockett, who's on Team Unstoppable and is behind the scenes helping me with all things podcasting, who is fabulous, and she has been noting questions to flush out a deeper level of understanding for this episode. So we are going to unpack it together and I'm going to hand it over to you, Sarah, to unpack mastering the manifestation matrix. All right. Well, you know, I'm very direct, so I am just going to jump right in. So in that first episode of the manifestation matrix and in, in part one, we talked a little bit about people that just don't really know what they want. And I think that that's a really common theme among a lot of people, and especially women, right? Um, so if, if, you, if you're talking to someone that they don't know what they want, how do, how do you kind of help them flush that out? Yeah, it's a really good question. So this comes up a lot. You're absolutely right. And I often just ask the question again in a different way, to be honest. I say things like, or I ask questions like, well, if you knew what you wanted, what would it be? And it sounds a little pat and cheesy, uh, perhaps, when it's out of context, but oftentimes we just need to, to be nudged a little bit further or given permission to really explore it or allow it to be messy. Like, sometimes stepping in saying, I want this. It feels so definitive and like we're making this life altering uh, stance, line in the sand, and we gotta get it right, right? And we have a fear of making a mistake so we won't claim that desire. And when given a little bit like, well, let's just play with it. Like, if you didn't know, what would it be? Like, like, let's throw some ideas out there. And so that's one place that I start with people. Another place that I start with is, you know, what have you um, said you wanted to do but put off? What have you said not now to? What have you said this person or these things come first in my life? Uh, What are you frustrated about not having achieved? Sometimes Sometimes I just flip it around and say, you know, well, what do you, what would you regret not having achieved in this life? What would you regret not having gone for? What is the music that's inside you? That, you know, Wayne Dyer has a beautiful quote, um, something that he said, I'm quoting, that is, don't die with the music still inside of you. Because if, if you have something that you really want to get done and you were to die tomorrow, what would you regret, right? These are the kinds of questions that you have to, ask yourself or have someone ask you so that you really um, own your desires. Yeah. Cool. Um, I, I noticed in that, in that episode, you also talked a little bit about your own experience. You talked about um, when you were in college and you hadn't chosen a major and someone suggested that you choose something very practical like accounting. Uh, so I guess my question is, and I think and by the way, I really, I, I was like, as I was saying that, I was like, oh, I'm offending all the people who did that. But it's not that I think accounting is bad or wrong. It's just that it wasn't my thing. Okay. It was, it, it can be someone else's thing and light them up, but it wasn't my thing. Yeah. Well, and how did you know? That's where I was going with this actually. Like while accounting is absolutely, it's perfect for some people. I know people that are like, yes, numbers, let's do this. Um, how did you know that, that that wasn't your path, that wasn't your purpose? Oh, it's a great question, Sarah. So um, I felt it in my body, right? Everything contracted. It was a feeling. Your feelings tell you so much. So 
I've learned over the years to trust, to under, to calibrate what those feelings mean. Because sometimes um, there's a feeling of fear or, or, or being scared, but that's really just excitement on hold, right? And like you're holding your breath and the difference between fear and excitement is just breathing, okay? But sometimes it's like, no, that's off course. So there's a bit of calibrating what those feelings mean and getting the data for yourself so you know um, and and then also trusting trusting yourself like this is good for me this is not good for me without making the other person wrong like without saying um, I have to be right in order uh, or he has to be wrong in order for me to be right kind of thing so just really really just feeling into it and knowing what those feelings meant and trusting my first reaction, which was contraction. Yeah. So you just sort of felt that in your whole body, like something just doesn't feel right on this path. Absolutely. Like it's a smallness. It's a feeling of smallness and like I am going to die if I do that, right? That like that just does not feel expansive to me. So for instance, someone else that might feel hugely wonderful too. Like they are someone who needs structure, more structure, that we all need structure, but they need more structure than I do. They need something that is more uh, formatted, that has a um, more de definitiveness about what done looks like. Like I'm an entrepreneur in a particular field and I'm I have a lot of, uh, ability, uh, you know, uh, comfort with risk and open loops and things that are not um, done and messiness. And other people really, they're more methodical and thank God, like I have people on my team who are much more methodical than I am. I have a project management mind, absolutely, but like I need people who systemize and create great systems on my team. I can do high level systems thinking, but I need someone who loves the execution of that in the implementation of that. And that's where they thrive. Okay. So someone who needs more, um, structure, more systems, more methodicalness, more sense of completion, all of that would, would do much better in that kind of situation. So my reaction to it, my feeling state is not going to be someone else's feeling state. Thank God again, right? That we all have that difference. Wonderful. Um, well, another thing that I, th that I heard you mention that I thought was really interesting was you're talking about how a lot of people have this big desires, but then they're not really doing anything with that. They can't seem to make that shift from desire to manifestation. I think we all know that person that's like, I'm going to do this and you, you're really rooting for them, but then they never quite get out of that cycle. How, like, what advice would you give someone who's kind of in that cycle? They have the big dreams and they just seem stuck. Yeah, absolutely. So it's multifold and I really would be like asking a lot of questions to understand exactly what's going on for the person because it's, it's, it's not a one size fits all thing. That said, you have to do the thing to do the thing. So you, you actually have to get into action and just like you, you have to take some sort of definitive action to go do it and risk, take a risk. I would also ask them to get help. Okay. Because it, it's extraordinary what can happen when some, when someone shines a light on the fact that you're saying that you want something, but you're not doing it and, and helps you see what's getting in your way, not just from a, um, like you don't want someone who's shaming you around that. That's not constructive, but you do want someone who's shining a light and then helping you move through your blocks. And this is, this is just an enormous, um, this, this is like, a, well, for one, it's an underhanded pitch for everyone finding a mentor or a coach, someone who's going to help them, not just their best friend, not just their parents, because you, you want to be working with someone who has the skill set and the expertise to really help you move through these things and isn't just going to be your, your bestie and your buddy, okay? And isn't going to be stuck in their own story about scarcity or risk or making mistakes or any of the other fears that hold us back. And, and also you don't want someone who hasn't done what you want to do yet. You want someone who knows, you know, if I am going to 
um, run a marathon and that's my goal, I'm not, I'm going to hire someone who knows how to, who's done that. Okay. I'm not going to hire someone who, who is, you know, a general contractor. Okay. Like you want an expert in the field. So if you're someone who wants to build a business or scale a business, you know, work with someone who's done that and who's done it rapidly and, and is further along than, than you are and can shine a light on, on that. And then again, action is just so huge. Sometimes you have to like hold your nose and leap and just go for it. And if you are the friend of the person who's, who you see taking action, like sometimes it's us. Okay. Like I'll raise my hand. There are times where I'm, I look at myself and I'm like, heck, you've been saying you want to do this. Like this is about, here's the thing. I walk my talk. I'm always holding myself to a higher standard. I'm always seeing where I'm in some sort of story about wanting something, but not acting on it. And I'm looking at closing the gap of in time. This is not about like showing up perfect, perfect every day. This is about saying, in order to be unstoppable, I need to keep taking massive action in the direction that I want to go in. Massive, immediate, consistent action. So the moment that I see that I've said that I want something and I'm not doing it, I, I go do it, okay? And if I'm in resistance to it and I put it off and I put it off and I put it off, you know, sometimes my, my mentor sh shines the light on it, or sometimes I will bring the, the issue to the conversation so that I can have someone help me unpack what I'm not, like, I know I need to be doing this and I'm not doing it. And I haven't been doing it for X amount of time. And what the blankety blank help me out here. Okay. Because I am not willing to stay stuck. I'm not willing to stop. I'm going to do whatever it takes to, to, become more and do more because I'm so freaking committed to my dreams. Okay. And what I want to create in this world. Yeah. So let me unpackage that just a little bit further, actually, um, you know, for myself so I can recap and make sure I have a good understanding, but also so that the listeners can understand a little better too. It sounds like what you're saying is a, a, a massive action is finding the right person to help you unpackage all of your stuff, whether that's sabotage or, you're just getting out of your own way or whatever it is. Um, I know that we all have our, like those of us that have big desires, we often are lifetime learners and we read all the books and we try to look at all the things. Like I definitely do that. I have all the books. Um, That's why I yeah. hired you. <laughs> <laughs> and we have friends that are our cheerleaders. And while that's all great, that's, that's, smaller movements. It's not your massive movement. It's not to get you there as quickly. I feel like maybe you might still get there, but I feel like that, that big action, that, like a very big first step is finding that person. Is that right? How do you... Absolutely. So, you know, for another episode, we're going to be talking about my path, right? And, and the a absolute specific steps that I took to get to the next level. And it wasn't overnight, you guys. So so the, the big massive leap that I made, the, there were smaller ones, 30 to 90K, 90K to 138. But the massive, the first really massive one was 138 to 700. And that year, I, I stepped into mentorship with someone. Had I been doing mentorship with other people before? Absolutely. So again, this comes to running the stairs and taking incremental but quick steps. You know, I, I signed up for programs initially, little small things that seemed huge at the time, but what I could wrap my head around was investing in a, a program from 197 or 497 or going to an event for, for 497 or a thousand dollars or something like that. And I took these smaller actions and, and to the point of being a lifetime learner and, and investing, but I, I, those felt huge for me in the beginning. Okay. Then I stepped into higher level programs that were 6,000, 10,000, you know, 20,000. And, and I kept increasing the level of investment, which was this like line in the sand decision. Like I'm going to get my ROI on this. Okay. Um, I'm going to do, do this, but it also meant working with higher level, um, mentors who could hold me, you know, as I grew, I needed someone who could hold me to a higher standard. And, um, the, the only regret that I, I made 
ha may have and of course I don't it's not really a regret because my my life is fabulous and I wouldn't change it and I wouldn't do it any differently but I would have signed up earlier kind of thing so I think it's imp it's important to get help and to really find the right person for you it might be me it might be someone else like I'm not attached to that whatsoever but the person you, you you have to get the help that you need to really um see the thing that you can't see for yourself that's what all successful people do they find mentors they find people who are further along and can point out like a laser beam that like this is what you need to do and this is what's stopping you it's super super important what what are some of the most common blocks that you're that you see with with folks whether they're clients or not yeah there there are a lot of themes everyone has a unique so here's what i want to say about that there are themes that are on the surface and then there are themes that are more core we could call those core wounds core 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 blocks things like the core ones are i'm not good enough i'm wrong i'm unlovable i don't belong um i don't i i'm i'm not supposed to live like these are some big core wounds and they then find manifestation if you will uh, expression in a variety of different ways of showing up and that could be as simple as procrastination right like it's not safe for me to have what i want because i think i'm wrong for having what i want so i'm going to procrastinate like i'm going to sabotage myself or distraction or not knowing how to focus or a thousand different priorities or a thousand different um, initiatives right like it's not safe to be me kind of thing right so all of these come out in different places and in between those the the sort of surface level stopping which is distraction not being able to focus um you know not taking action not choosing what you want all the sort of surface level things not not marketing yourself right actual tactical business things right not selling you know not choosing what to sell having too many things to sell all of those things like that's that's at the outer surface level and then the core level are, are these things like not being enough being wrong not being lovable not belonging um fear of survival um if you know fear of annali 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 wow oh, i can't pronounce that annihilation An annihilation thank you sometimes <laughs> <Got> you <laughs> <laughs> thank you appreciate that um or at that sort of core level and then in between i would say that there are these stories or meanings that we have created this programming that we've created because because we're, we're meaning making machines human beings are meaning making machines and when we are very young and our subconscious programming is being um our subconscious is being programmed um our fears okay our core wounds we we explain them by creating meaning and we explain them by creating meaning because we can't make our primary source of survival wrong our parents cannot be wrong or if it was your grandparents or your aunt or uncle that raised you or your foster parents or whatever it is right but your primary caregivers we cannot make them wrong because if they are wrong we die okay that means that the god in our lives who gives us food safety survival um life they're wrong how could that be that means that that all of this is unstable okay our security then becomes unstable so you you then have to create a story that explains gives meaning to why something is happening so you want candy and your mom screams at you leave that drop that that's bad for you your teeth are going to fall out whatever it is she has some anti sugar like obsession and you think that means she doesn't like the, the love and the safety are going to go away she must be right okay so then we create some meaning around it's 
it's good, not, we don't consciously like it, but it's good right for someone to yell at me, okay? And then there's some like blind spot around that and then you're in a career where you have bosses that yell at you or you have clients that yell at you or you have um, conflict in your, your marriage or your partnership and it shows up in all these different ways. So I, I hope that gives a little bit of a, a wider breadth to it, but it's very, it, in some ways they're, they're very common, and then in other ways there's a very unique way that each person creates the meaning or the story, and that becomes the blind spot that keeps them living out the same freaking pattern over and over and over again, thinking that they're changing, but having the same variation on the theme again and again. Can I ask you a very personal question? Absolutely. Um, in, in the time that I've been working with you, it's an observation that I think that your superpower is seeing people's potential. But I know that some people are also very, very blocked. Um, how, do you, how do you personally deal with that? How does it feel to deal with that when you just you know it's in there, and you know it's it's a it's a struggle to get it out for some people. How how do you deal with that, and how does it feel to deal with that? So, like I have a very cerebral reaction to it, and I'll, and then I'll share the emotional side to it both. Okay, so the cerebral thing is I can't want it. I can't want it for you. Okay, I I'm not the one that's doing the work. Okay, you have to want it badly enough yourself to move through, quite frankly, the terror barrier, the huge blocks that it's gonna to take to scale. You are gonna to have to have the courage to scale. And you get that courage by really owning that desire. Among other things, you need a, a, a game plan, an action plan, strategies, techniques, skill sets, mindset, mental aspect of success, all of that, okay? But you have to want it badly enough in order to have the courage to scale, okay? And so I can't want it for you. It has to, it has to be um, self-initiated, self-driven, okay? And, and when I see someone's potential, I will hold the light up to it and I will shine a light on it and I'll, I'll show them the opportunities. I'll identify the opportunities because sometimes people just, all they need is someone to, 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 to light the path and then they're like, wow, I can do that, let's go, okay? Um, but but sometimes, you know, I'll light the path and I'll see, like I really can see this is, this is their superpower, this is what they need to be doing. Um, and I do that in conversation, it's not, a, I don't dictate anything, okay? But I will, I will then shine the light on, on it and it's up to them to, to, to step forward. And when they don't, you know, I don't take it personally, Sarah, okay? I, I can't, right? That's not my job. It's, and, and it would be, um, it would be inaccurate and inappropriate and irresponsible too. Um, I can go, okay, is, I, I kind of do this like, oh, isn't that interesting, yeah. okay? And I'm really good at just, it's not, it's not that I dismiss people because I never do that. It's that I can I I'm like okay that's the result that they're choosing. I I I need I can't get emotionally invested in something that is not my choice. It is not that's not my responsibility. That's not my choice. Okay, does this make sense? Absolutely. Yeah. I was also thinking about on the flip side of that how just freaking amazing it must feel when you are able to just sort of reach in and pull that out and have someone be like, yes, this is the thing. I need. This is what I need to do with my life. Yeah, and then they execute on it. That feels freaking amazing. Yeah, yeah. But I also don't take credit there. I mean, I'm happy for them. I, I mean, I take credit for the coaching and the shining of the light and the guidance and the mentorship and the advising and the, the like helping them see the action plan and helping them map it out and helping them stay the course, you know, like when, when the challenges come, helping them stay the course, like all of that, that's, my, that's like what my job is, but they have to take the action. So like they get the credit. Okay. Like when they go from, you know, when they triple their income or quadruple their income or, or, you know, 
cross the seven figure mark, or cross the six figure mark, or get to their first 10K month, or sign the new client. They did that, okay? And I celebrate with them, but they did that. Yeah. Absolutely, it's like yeah. um, it's like you're the Sherpa and you get them to the top of the mountain. That doesn't mean that they didn't put any of the work in, obviously, like they worked their butt off and they should absolutely celebrate every single thing they did to get there. But you know, everybody needs a guide. Like when you're doing something difficult, whether it's transitioning how your whole life looks and feels and is, um, or doing something like climbing Everest or Kilimanjaro or something like that. Like you, you need someone to help you sometimes and that's how the way you do the big things, right? Absolutely. And I, I think that's a really good point, Sarah. We all need people to help ourselves, help us. So f transparency here, if you saw me six years ago, you would have seen someone who was so committed to DIYing life, okay? So, what did that mean? That meant that I read the books. Okay, so there was a certain about, amount of getting help, but not a huge amount. Like I felt like in order to really be worthy of the thing that I was going after, I had to do it all myself. And that was really an addiction to hard, okay? An addiction to struggle, an addiction to uh, low self-worth. Like I wasn't like, in order for me to be worthy, I had to do it on my, my own. Well, you know what? Someone who values herself says like, how can I make this easier on myself and gets, gets support, whether it's from a more loving partner or your, your um, bestie or, or a mentor. It, you know, it, it, this is not like a, a just do it with a mentor kind of thing, but it's like, look at your environment and look at what you are, um, getting help with like how you're being supported in in life I think it's super 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 important yeah I think that can be such a big one like personally that's the thing I struggle with sometimes uh I, I want to say like I can do it I can do it I need help um but I do you know it's, it, it's a, and it's something that I've worked on for a long time to be able to say it's a, it's okay to ask for help um, but I know it's one of those things that have been there since childhood. Like I was on my own a lot, so I just got it in my head. Like you're on your own. Mm -hmm. um, so I well, think maybe we need to unpack that, Sarah. <laughs> <laughs> that's a whole other thing. Yeah. <laughs> um, but I think that that's a thing for a lot of people. I do too. I really do. Really good questions. Thank you so much. I, I think this is going to be fun to do these after um, most or every uh, episode. So keep them coming. Thank you. I think that's a wrap. Is that a wrap? That is a wrap. Okay, that's a wrap, guys. Hey, thanks so much for joining us and being part of the Unstoppable Woman movement. We have got a ton of free resources for scaling your business at theunstoppablewoman.com slash free stuff. And you can find that link in the description below. So go ahead and check those out. And we'd also love your help in getting our message out to more and more women. If you'd be willing to share this video with all the unstoppable women in your life, that would be fantastic. And while you're at it, hit the subscribe button so you never miss an episode. Reviews, likes, and comments are greatly appreciated. We go in and read them all. So thank you for those. And thanks for listening and be unstoppable.